Uh, welcome back to the Plus uh, TV's breakfast show. Now, this week started on a mournful note for residents of Kushe in Kuro district of Plateau State. Twelve of their kinsmen were killed by gunmen on Sunday without provocation. The natives say herdsmen carried out the killings. Five other people were killed at the same time in nearby Zalgo village, also in Plateau State. Herders have also been blamed for that, but the Miete Alla Cattle Breeders Association is disputing that. A Berom native and lawyer, Solomon Daliab, is joining us uh, to discuss this. And of course, we also have uh, the Miete Alla Cattle Breeders Association in Plateau State, uh, who is represented today by Nuru Abdullah. Many thanks for joining us on the breakfast, uh, gentlemen. Let's begin with you, uh, Barrister Solomon and Daliab. Can you give us uh, the actual picture, in your opinion, what happened? Uh, on Sunday. Barista Dalio, did you hear my question? All right, let's uh, bring in um, Nuru Abdullah. Uh, there have been accusations and counter accusations concerning uh, who was uh, behind uh, the attack on Sunday, and uh, most uh, fingers are pointing in your direction. What is your organization or your association rather saying concerning what happened in Plateau State over the weekend? Yes. Uh, on behalf of Mieti Allah Katul Breeders Association of Nigeria Plateau State Chapter and the entire Plani Cattle Breeders in the Plateau, we totally condemn the incessant killings of one another from one point to another. And all the killings, we describe them as barbaric and an act of criminality. So we, 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 as an association, we didn't back any killing or destruction of property of one another. But uh, at this moment, I want us to look at the things happening in Plato State holistically, because there are issues on the undergoing in the in the states that are very horrors and barbaric, which we we deem it necessary to describe them and mention them in in, in media. Uh, what what the government of Plato State are doing and some of the security agencies is 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 a bias in mind in in treating these issues. When it comes to Fulani being killed, they never mention it in any media. They will not issue out uh, statements condemning such an act. But when it is the other side of the story, they, they try to con condone people uh, that are affected and then they visit them, they assist them and, 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 and other things like that which I don't believe it will help us in resolving this problem in Plato State. What I believe is government should do all possible way and romance everybody and see the take care of everybody in the state so that we, we join our hands to, to, to resolve this problem amicable. But whenever something happens to the other side, they will start alleging that it is suspected Fulani. For the past 20 years, they have been suspecting Fulani, 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 and up to today, there is no result. Investigations have gone on in some other killings where they suspected Fulani, and after investigation, you will be surprised to see who are the, 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 the culprits in the... In All right, uh, Bula, you still there? Hello. Okay, I think we had uh, we have uh, Barrister Solomon Daliop joining us, right? Uh, thanks for joining the conversation. Uh, before you joined us, we we're talking about the killings that happened over the weekend in Plateau State, and uh, uh, residents and farmers alike are quick uh, to blame um, the Mark Bandats and the Meiti Alla Cattle Breeders Association of Nigeria, and their representative in uh, Plateau State is saying that that is not the true picture that government is actually sympathetic uh, to residents uh, when it comes to killings and uh, there's never any mention when their um, association members are uh, uh, actually you know killed uh, what do you have to say concerning that sorry i didn't get you clearly the network that is uh, 
they, 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 your voice, your voice is, is not going somewhere. All right, I'll repeat the question. I'll try and take it slowly this time around. We're talking about the killings that happened in Plateau State on Sunday, you know, where people were killed. And the Mieti Allah uh, Association is saying that they are not responsible in as much as residents I think otherwise. Uh, Mark Ban is saying that government is sympathetic to others. As a side to them, whenever there are killings, they are quick to blaming them and government never ever mentions about them when their own members are, are involved or killed. Well, uh, let's bring here on the flag. I wonder why this now will go on air but to deny uh, the involvement as of the uh, Barista Dalio. Barista Dalio, we can't hear you. All right, we'll take a quick break. We're still looking at the killings in Plateau State. We'll come back and try and reconnect with Solomon Dalio. Stay with us. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We're talking about a very sad incident that occurred in Plata State on Sunday where gunmen killed 12 men, uh, injured four men and one woman. And we've invited Barrister Solomon Daliop to shed more light on that. Uh, good morning. Thanks for joining us again, Barrister Daliop. Pardon? Thanks for joining us, Barrister Daliop. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, let's first hear from you regarding what happened in Kushe community on August, or I beg your pardon, on Sunday night. Yeah, um, at about 9, 9 p.m. on Sunday, uh, gunmen suspected to be Fulani militias invaded Kushe village of Kuru district in the south local government area of Plateau State. As a result of that, 12 people were shot dead and five others uh, sustained fatal injury. And then not only that, another village in Rium was also attacked simultaneously. There was also another attack recorded in Basa local government in a village called Zogu all perpetrated by Fulani headsmen. And it will, it will interest Nigerians to know that prior to this attack, there have always been local security intelligence gathered to the effect that such communities will be attacked. And it will be alerted all security architects uh, just on ground will be informed before time. Like in the case of that Kuru community that was invaded, the information went round virally last week that there will be attacks in Sabolai, that is Kushe village. We had expected to see proactive measures taken by security agents on ground to ensure that either it is averted or the attackers you know, are repelled, or, 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 you know, they, they should be a condom on that community. All right, Barrister Dalio, Barrister Dalio, yeah. can, can we hold on? Um, we spoke to um, Nuhu Abdullahi, he is the chairman of the Mieti Allah uh, Cattle Breeders Association um, earlier, mm. and we, you know, put forward these accusations to him that Fulani herders or Magban members are alleged to have perpetrated these attacks, but he said it was simply falsehood. So um, where do you come in? Because you're now saying that Fulani herdsmen are responsible for those attacks in Plateau State. What evidence yeah. um, do you have to yes. show for that? Yeah, of course, it's Fulani herdsmen. There's no doubt about that. You know, they've been perpetrating all these attacks. And it will interest Nigerians to also know that uh, uh, based on the projection and the body disposition of Fulani headsmen, they are to attack you and then you are not to respond, you are not to exercise a right of self-defense. Because in an event you exercise right of self-defense and one of them is killed, they will go on air and say, so those people have killed their people. 
That is just it. And then there are no traces of Fulani within that axis, but they usually come from either, uh, uh, you know, nearby, nearby Fulani settlement. Okay. So, so that has always been the trending, you know, happening here on the plateau. All right, Barry, it, will Barry also interest Nigerians, it, will, it will also interest Nigerians to know that, you know, you know, you know, the analysis there is that, you know, uh, uh, last month we received an information, it went viral on air and also in the social media, that Plateau State just will be attacked by Boko Haram. Shortly after that, we started witnessing attacks by Fulani hitmen. And now, do we now say it is Boko Haram that is attacking us who have joined force with Fulani hitmen, or it is Fulani hitmen on their own, exclusively without, you know, you, you know, the involvement or the, you know, collaboration of uh, um, a Boko Haram that are attacking Plateau? So those are the German questions that ought to be, you know, uh, you know, you know, uh, 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 asked. Okay, Barista Daliop, um, thank you. Can yeah. you hold on? Let's bring in uh, Ms. Abdullahi. Ms. Abdullahi, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right. So, um, Barista Daliop simply stated that they received intelligence to say that Boko Haram was going to attack, and then shortly after, they started getting attacked by alleged Fulani herdsmen. But you're saying exactly. that Fulani herdsmen are not responsible, and that the, the government is taking sides in this matter. So, may you kindly, uh, you know, oblige us with this information. Who then are the real culprits perpetrating these attacks in Plateau State? Well, the, uh, the, the root cause is... Okay. Mr. Abdullahi, Mr. Abdullahi, please go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Am, the root cause this, the root cause this of this Barista, attack. Barista, listen to me. Barista, Barista, Barista please hold friend. your thoughts. Let's get um, a response from Abdullahi. We'll come back to you to get uh, more comments. Oh, all right. You. Thank you. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, to a certain level, there are issues raised by the Barista that I can agree with. Okay. But uh, there are issues that he is contradicting himself. Which of the issues? By when he said the security luxury in the state, I concur with him in this aspect. The security are not doing the needful. Because like he mentioned, from, from that crew he is alleging Fulani, to where Fulani certain men are, is a very far distance. If security will work closely, we trust strength movement, whether on motorbike, on vehicles, or, or whatsoever, they should they should have at least make an arrest immediately, so that we see who is that perpetrators of this genocide. Are they Fulani? Are they Boko Haram? Who are they? That's what we're so asking you, Mr. Abdullahi. So that this, this are and then, the law, secondly, he is, he is saying it is, it is Boko Haram that has been alleged to be attacking Plato State, but at a point he is saying it is Fulani Hasmen. No, what there he is said, no connection between Fulani Hasmen and Boko Haram. There no. is no that connection completely. Okay, what he said we, specifically. We are always at the higher to, to peace processes, and we have been working tirelessly to see how we fix this peace in different locations and we have been working with government security agencies opinion leaders traditional leaders religion leaders and so on and so forth to see how we foster peace in the state so by by mentioning the fulani he is duplicating the effort of good people that are working for peace in the state and this these allegations have been giving us headache where we cannot ascertain who exactly made the atrocity. For instance, when the Saffron Kulere, a paramilitary leader, was attacked and killed in Boko's local government, immediately after, before one hour, it was announced the whole world knows that Fulani have attacked the Paramo ruler and killed him. That is how the, the investigation has been going on for quite a long time, up till today. There is no identification of who did that atrocity. But had it been there, keep it open. It could be anybody. So let's go on research, on, on investigation, to see exactly who is this, the perpetrators. 
whether they are Fulani, they are Chala, they are Ron, they are Kulere, they are Birom, they are who, what, whoever. So they, they, they map out strategy. Then I was talking to them. They refused to map out strategy. What with the locals there to identify who are the perpetrators? Let's put our heads together, join our heads together, and work as a, as a community, as a team. To All see right. we resolve this incest and killing. All right, uh, let's, uh, let's bring in um, Barista Dalio. I don't know together. if somebody is supporting this, this, this criminal activity. All right, thank you, Abdullah. So, so good, so fine. Well, thank they you, Abdullah. Kid, thank you, Abdullah. We'll, we'll get back to you wrong, again. He is saying the wrong or uh, it is great have been attacked and killed. Their own killings have drawn attention in the world. But our own, when a Fulani man is killed, nobody talks about it. We will try our best to see we put it in the media, but the media is, is, is behaving like there is nothing. Government will not issue uh, uh, any statement. Security agencies to confirm the incidences. All right, uh, all right, uh, all right, Mr. Nu Abdullahi. All right, thank you for your thoughts. Uh, Barista Dalyop, let's get back to you. Now, you have heard uh, all that uh, uh, Mr. Abdullahi has said so far concerning the no love lost relationship uh, between um, locals and, of course, um, the Fulani herdsmen. And you also, uh, you know, said that uh, there have been uh, security lapses in Plateau State. So, what then would you suggest, you know, uh, as preferable solutions uh, so far concerning all of these issues? You said you have local vigilantes, and of course, you're saying that uh, the security uh, on the state level is not really, you know, what it should be. So, what are you suggesting right now? Since uh, government, as it is, cannot really take care of residents, uh, what then is the fate of uh, residents and farmers and, of course, locals uh, in Jos? Yeah, uh, one, of, one of the ways forward is that uh, over time, Fulani have asked God to uh, clamor for the retention of uh, soldiers military here on the plateau because it appears they they have they have the sympathy of the military i would say this without any iota of doubt or reservation of any word because we've had reasons where we petition the you know some of the security personnel who have you know completely played down the gallery with the full when during the invasion of communities so there should be total withdrawal of all the military and then be replaced with mobile policemen. Let us also test this aspect of the security arrangement to see whether the situation in the plateau will, you know, uh, persist. Secondly, there should also be arrest and prosecution of whoever is found perpetrating this crime or whoever has been fingered. Because many a times, Suspects who are full of men have been arrested, and then within within a short time, they are either taken to Abu Dhabi, from there they are released, or there is an outright release of them without a proper and preliminary investigation taking. And then these are people that have been fingered. There are some of them that were arrested with arms. I remember in Bokos local government, in Dapo, Dapo district to be precise, when the community was attacked in 2017 or 2018, a full animal was arrested with arm among those who unleashed terror attacks on the on, 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 on the, the locals, and then he was taken to police here again. Just but we didn't hear of any prosecution, we didn't hear of anything. The next thing is that the guy has been released. Okay. So there should be there should be arrest and prosecution of all those that are involved. Indeed, arrest what, and who, prosecution. Whoever, whether it's the bureau, whether it's the Fulani, whether it's the house, or whoever that is involved. All right, Barista, and then Barista totally, Dalio. There should be, there should be a, 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 a dislodgement of all the Fulanis that have invaded native communities and are presently occupying them, having stopped them from their ancestral home state. As it is now on, on, on the plateau, we have over, over 50 to 60 villages that are currently under the occupation of Hellgrove men by way of invasion, by way of conquest. And the clamor is that you know, they have gotten those communities by way of conquest, which is not tenable within our legal system. Hmm. So those are the issues, and then they should be banned to open grazing. 
Okay, ba Barista Daliop, yes, that, that's, that really is uh, another kettle of fish within this, this issue. But let's bring in Mr. Abdullahi um, here now. Uh, Mr. Abdullahi, I think the bone of contention here is who is responsible for the killings that we've been seeing, mm. you know, in the north, especially in Joss um, right now. So I wanted to ask you about, you know, who is responsible? We know that your your sister association, the uh, Mieti Alak uh, Kutahori Association. Um, have you heard any word from them regarding if they ha if they know anything about these attacks in Plateau States? Yes. Uh, these issues in this country they are they are disturbing, but I cannot talk on behalf of Mieti Alak Kutahori. I am a member of Mieti Allah Katul Breeders Association of Nigeria, and I am the leader in Plato State. So all I am saying, I am talking on behalf of Mieti Allah Katul Breeders. I had the barrister saying that they should ban all, all military officers that are in Plato State to reinstall re re them with a mobile police, which is okay. But let me tell you, these military officers have been, some of them will write their names in gold and keep for a history. People like General Henry, uh, General Agondu, who came to Plato State when Plato State in, is in very high chaos, but he worked tirelessly <clears throat> day in, day out to forestall, to enforce the, the, the peace. Before he left Plato State, the Plato State was a bit quiet everywhere. Things are moving quietly. People are mingling together, and businesses are going on successfully. And now that we are talking, there is one colonel in Barikiladi, that is Sector 4, who is still write his name in, in gold, because the guy who has been up and doing, now Barikiladi is a bit quiet. There are some pockets of issues here and there, but still, Bariki Lad is very quiet. So, we, we do need uh, mobile police and Nigerian security personnel, and we buy them. We agree that they should come uh, and, and assist to forestall this peace and peaceful coexistence. But what do we do about the sponsors of this Hyannos Act? There are people behind the scene whom we call them shadows. <coughs> they are there behind, perpetrating this heinous act. How do we cop them? Just recently, an, uh, 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 an armory or a manufacturing company of, of, of raffles has been identified in Plato State. And I believe there are many more that are here in Plato State manufacturing raffles and selling them to locals so that they take a law into their hands. What do we do about all these things? There are ample of arms and ammunition in Plato State more than any other place. So government should tirelessly work towards uh, uh, recovering all these arms and ammunition from the hands of the, the locals and then work towards achieving sustainable peace. All right, Mr. Abdullahi. Those are uh, very, those are very serious, you know, uh, you know, claims you've made that there are rifle manufacturing um, setups in in Plateau State. But bringing in Mr. Mr. Dali up now, do you know if anyone has been arrested in connection with these killings and attacks in Plateau since on Sunday? Uh, well, um, I have to commend the effort of uh, the present commissioner of police, who has effected some arrests. Like when the community was attacked last three weeks, you know, one of the attackers who was injured, because one policeman was killed in the scene, and his rifle cut away by the, by the full and men. Now, through the security intelligence, one of them has been arrested. So, so, so then we are, we are patiently waiting to see, you know, what comes out of the investigation. Okay. And then to ensure that, yes, so, so all the, in all these things is that few or few in just, it is, it is through the local intelligence that those ones were able to arrest them. But the Fulani are not really 
to surrender some of their people who have been fingered, even names given to them that we want you to produce so so persons who have been named in this particular attack. They have never cooperated. In, in short, it was it was only in one of the incidents that a paramount ruler, one of the traditional ruler, was killed. He, you know, some of them were were, were, were kind of brought and and then they were handed over to the security. But after then, we didn't hear anything. The next thing we had, they've been they, they've been released. All right. Without yeah. inviting even the uh, you know victims. So all we are saying is that I'm still using this opportunity to commend the effort of Colonel uh, Abdul Salam, who is in charge of Barkiladi. And then you begin to ask, why is Barkiladi experiencing peace? Because the man is up and doing. But why are other places experiencing, you know, insurgency and then all, all, all sort of uh, attacks from planning It's either the officers in charge of those areas have compromised. And that's why the Fulani feel that, you know, it is our own. It is the, you know, possibly this one is with us. That is why we can do and undo, because nobody will do us anything. Otherwise, we would have seen all these communities that have been named that will be attacked. You know, stationed with heavily with security agents, uh, you, you know, we are with uh, uh, security agents. But we have not seen that one. Fulani will come and unleash terror after that, you know, like the incident that occurred in, in uh, Kushia of Kuru. After 11 hours, security came. After 11 hours, and then you are telling me that you have confidence in this kind of security. Nigeria security, most of them have compromised. They've already taken sides. They almost know this thing. And that's why I am, I am personally calling for restructuring. Once there is restructuring, every state will take responsibility of, you know, a, a guaranteeing the safety and security of its people. And not, you know, people who have come, who have been hosted by native inhabitants. And then overnight, they've turned mad. And then killing people at will. And then nobody's saying anything. All right, Barrister Daliop, um, I, I want to ask, do you have any information regarding the health status of the five people who were injured um, or were aware that they, they have you know, been taken to the hospital? Are any of them responding to treatment? Well, those individuals are now responsible for their self-treatment. No any assistance, no intervention, no one, they've been left to their fate as if it is, it, is, it, is, it is their own fault that they were attacked and killed and those who sustained injuries are left to their fate. So you can see how pathetic the situation is. No attention has been given to those ones. They are left on their own. Hmm. All right, uh, thank you so much, Ambarista Solomon uh, Dalia, for your thoughts. Uh, let's just get a final um, word from uh, the president of the Meiti Al Lakato Builders Association in charge in Plateau State. So far, now you uh, you said uh, the the security uh, situation in uh, Plateau State is not uh, leaves so much to be desired now. So, in the next couple of days, are you looking at uh, maybe bringing um, a situation where the locals, the farmers, and of course some young men can have some sort of dialogue and maybe foster peace in some way. Do I respond? Hello? No, Mr. Abdullahi. Mr. Abdullahi, please. that question was referred to you. Hello? Hello, Mr. Abdullahi. Did you get the question Mr. I just? Uh, yeah, what I asked specifically. Repeat that question, please. Uh, basically, a uh, way forward to foster, uh, to foster peace in Plateau State among some locals, uh, uh, indigent, and of course, um, your association. Uh, are you looking at uh, maybe bringing some sort of a situation where all of you can sit uh, maybe at a town hall or a round table and discuss some of these issues? And uh, so that way, the issue of a no love loss relationship can be addressed uh, once and for all. Yes, uh, we have done some strategies maybe especially in the southern senatorial zone which now with the, with the assistance of especially the former ruler of Huase, the area of Huase, and the Longomai of Shandong, a very good chap and up and doing uh, we join heads together now the southern zone is a bit quiet and things are moving normal the issue of kidnappers, arm robbers, and so on and so forth. We don't blame a community, a, an entire community. We go to the criminals themselves. 
and then freeze them out, whether they are Fulani, they are Gumai, they are whoever. We freeze them out and hand them over to the to appropriate authorities. So what I want us to do here is the barista is busy calling Fulani, 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 which will never help us. Don't think all these Fulanis are criminals. Out of, out of 100%, it's just 1% of the Fulanis that are, are, are criminals. And we are giving our, submitting ourselves to surrender them to the security. If you have any information about anybody that is perpetrating any harm that is a Fulani, just give me that information. I will, I will, I will disclose it with the security agencies and they, they, they will arrest that guy. And the Birums, the Birums that are killing our realists on daily basis, almost daily basis now, we know them by their names, we know them by their villages, we know them by their... And we describe them, and it is no more suspicious that we are certainly on who is doing what to us. For instance, what just happened on in don't 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 recently on Sunday this last week, a Fulani man was killed. Uh, an age of about 60 years old Fulani man was killed. But we know the killer because they 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 they, they mention his name. They call him. He went out and then they, 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 they shot him and killed him. So they, their brothers know whose voice is that. But up to today, there is no arrest. All right, Mr. Mr. And all these attacks that have been on Fulani, we know them. These uh, uh, quiet people that have been killing our people so rampantly, nobody has been arrested. So yeah. we are baffled with the situation in Plato that, that they are biased. And then they are anything they suspect Fulani and say Fulani, and any Fulani is liable for that offense, and they arrest anybody and detain him and torture him, and then, and then, and then say he is a criminal. And then they, when they go further in the investigation, they will not go anywhere. All right. Um, Mr. Abdullahi, we really thank you for your time on the breakfast this morning, Chairman of MACBAN, as well as Barista Solomon Daliop, uh, for joining us to take a look at the security situation in Plateau State. Do have yourselves a great day, gentlemen. Thank you. It's a pleasure. All right, uh, when we return from this quick break, uh, we will be focusing on the calls for restructuring in a moment. Uh, stay with us. Don't go away.